So today we are going to discuss um, foreign exchange. So we're gonna we wanna have a look at some of the stuff here that is going on, uh, and we're gonna have a look at some of the stuff that we can potentially we can potentially look at. So today we're going to look at the dollar index. We're going to have a look at some very sort of key things that are happening in the likes of the US dollar, and we're going to have a look at some of the other currencies that are strong and weak at the moment. Now, by dropping a horizontal level here, we can see that it's hit a floor, it's hit a floor, and it's come back, and it's hit a floor here. So we've had a little bit of a, a descending triangle going on here, and it has broken out to the upside from here. Okay, so now are we are we massively sort of agreeing that this is this is taken off and this is popping to the upside? No, not really. We have a double top here. We have a little bounce back here. So I would expect it to find some sort of resistance around here or back here. So in this sort of zone area here, I would expect some sort of resistance, some sort of uh, momentum change, and then potentially. Uh, have a look at this in a, a different light but till that happens i'm not sort of looking at this in that sense so if it comes back up to here i potentially look at this as a short or a continuation the overall trend is down or we can look at this as this is something that you guys may have done already before you may have not it all depends on on sort of what you've done so we have phase one, phase two, phase one, phase two, phase one, phase two, phase one, phase two, phase one. Now, because this hasn't made a lower low, it hasn't come down here, this is now changed, okay? So this is now changed. So we're looking at this at a different light now. We're looking at this in a different direction. So if I get this, now this turned into phase one. I'm gonna change that to a different color, say black. So that is phase one, phase two, phase one. Okay, so this is now changed. So we had the, the whole cyclicity coming down, the phase ones were coming down, and because it didn't take out that low down here, it is now sort of changing. Now again, can't I can't say it's made a higher high till it takes out this particular high here, and comes up in the air. But it looks like dollar is slightly trying to push up to the upside. And the question is, is how far is this going to go? So we are in that transition. So we are in that particular moment where we're looking at this to potentially change direction. We're looking for it to potentially disappear. We're looking for it to, to go to the, to the opposite side. So that's what we're, we're looking for. We're looking for it to change. And that's what we're we're doing, uh, and that's what we're 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 trying to do at this particular moment, uh, and then go from there. But again, it's something we have to keep an eye on. It's something that we have to, to keep continue working on to make sure that we're we're doing our level best. We're making sure we're following the right structure because the problem is, is that people get sucked into things going. Oh, this is going down. Well, I'd expect that to go up to this area here first before it goes down. So we have to have an area or a target in mind before we're looking for it to change. Now, if it breaks this high, then I'll be looking to buy this off this horizontal level. I'd want that to break and then retest. So we're in this sort of no man's land that it wouldn't be something that we'd be looking to trade per se, but if it comes back up to here, potentially short, but if it breaks there and then retest, then I'll be looking for this at a long, okay? And then if we have a look at gold, you'll see something similar on gold. It has been moving sideways. It's inside that triangle. Uh, we had a trade here set up to the downside, a breakout of that of that downward or descending triangle there. And um, so it depends on what we're looking. This would, for this to go short, we would expect dollar to get weaker. Sorry, dollar to get stronger, we'd expect this to drop down. Uh, if this then dollar got stronger, you'd expect this to pop to the upside. But if we look back historically, we are very close to a record high up here. So there's the record high. So we are getting we are getting pretty close to that. So that's that there. So again, for this to drop, there's a probably there's a high probability of it. 
Now, something I sort of want to bring your attention to is we have had we have had news. Okay, so we've had news in Australia over over the night. Okay, so at five thirty a.m. we had news. So if we look at this, previous was three point six. Expected was three point six. And then look at this was 3.85. And if I look into this a little more detail, this is what's come after here. And um, Philip Lowe, Governor uh, Policy Decision, has come up there. They've put an extra 2.5 basis points to 3.5, which means they've increased uh, the, the rate paid to exchange. So it means then that this is getting a little more expensive. So if we look at this, we have the RNB surprise market, the rate hikes of 3.875 in May, Aussie, uh, Aussie rallies. So it also means that if we look at this, interest rate is peaked at 7%, which is still too high. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring that down. And by putting it up the extra 25 basis points, it means that Aussie has actually had a rally over the last couple of hours. So we go back to the charts and have a look at that. We go start off with the Aussie bear, so Aussie USD. So if we look at Aussie USD, we can see we had that spike to the upside. Now, is that something that we could have anticipated? Absolutely, yes. Look, from a webinar on Sunday night, that was something we looked at. Looked at uh, here, hit that floor, looking for this to pop to the upside. Again, am I looking for it to go the whole way back there? No, I would not. I'd only ever look for this to go to a one-to-one, -one, which would be about there. But again, it's it's how Aussie is going to react now to this. Is that it's just a, a one-off movement because of the news? Well, if you think that, you move your stop loss inside break even, which means you cannot lose in this particular trade. Yes, you may get stopped out of break even, and then it may go again, but or you jump out of your trade now altogether. What's that about 0.4 of a percent, I'd say? Yeah, 0.42 of a percent. So the idea is, is that you're making sure you're banking a little bit of profit and then leaving that alone. So it depends on what you to expect Aussie to do. We've had this massive sideways miss uh, between Aussie and dollar. They've been trying to fight out, see which one is going to get stronger. And it's been pretty flat, as I say. If we go down to say Euro Aussie, have a quick look. Euro Aussie, and we can see we were expecting Aussie to come down from into this area. And actually, on the back of that news, it had a pretty big rally. So we're now, I would expect this to come back to about here. Or we end up with some sort of a low test bar. Okay, so that's. That's not exactly what we want either, but we might end up with some sort of a low test bar uh, in this particular scenario. Just delete it there. I'll actually draw it in on Zoom. We might end up with some sort of a some sort of a, a low test bar, and that would be the that would be what we're we're sort of looking for. So I'm just going to draw this bar out. If this bar finishes like this. If it, then we have a little bit of a bar on the top of it. That would be the ideal scenario we'd be looking to place our trade on. So in this particular scenario, what we would have is we would have our entry above that there. Well, it wasn't supposed to be that drawing too. It was supposed to be this one. So we would have our entry there. And our stop loss there. And then we'll be looking for this to continue. And look, we probably have a trend line there as well. So we're looking for trend to continue. And that again comes down to what we expect to happen with the likes of US dollar or um, euro. Are we expecting euro to continue with its trends? And if we expect that, I'll probably bring that down to here, see how that works. Nope, it's much better. It's much better if I bring that up here to the likes up there. Look, could even get that there. One, two, three, four, five touches. So it comes down to now 
how the market is now going to react. So when the US opens at half two, are we going to start seeing uh, a huge movement to the upside on the on the likes of um, on the US market? Are we now going to see a strength in an Aussie? Or a weakness on Aussie, which means then that gives us a nice little turn. But there, there are a couple of little things we're looking at here or here could be either of those areas, and um, but it all depends on price action. If we get that low test bar, then there's a potential turn to the upside there. Clear all the drawings. Uh, now, also if we look at NZD, NZD has had a little bit of a movement as well on this. Okay. Um, nowhere near as, as strong as, as Aussie, but look, NZD again has had a little bit of strength. So um, the Australasian market is, is starting to move. We have a look at GBP Aussie. Again, look, we looked at this and this actually hit profit for us. This was a 2.14 to 1, uh, probably went up to 2.5, but look, now starting to come back. Again, the same sort of trend line is there, and we're getting pretty close to, to that area. Um, and for this to be interesting, I, I would like a low test bar, another bar, another selling bar, but a low test bar there. And then I'd potentially be interested in this. But at the present moment, nope. Um, even if it turned around and was a low test bar and it finished up here in the top one third, again, I wouldn't be massively looking at this. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be that interested in it. Why? Because it's not sitting on this level or it's not touching my trend line. I wanted to have one more bar coming down. Uh, I'd like that to stay like that and then have one more selling day on this. Aussie NZD. Again, look, we've had a little bit of Aussie strength on the back of that. So we wanted uh, NZD to come down to here and then Aussie strength. It didn't, it came the whole way back down to this area here. This little sort of level that we had pinpointed, turned around. Again, is it is it anything we can trade here at the moment? Nope. You could potentially look at this and go, well, there's a reversal on this. Uh, if we go out and have a look at that, that level there. Couple of touches there, look, we have a, a pretty decent level through this area. So that was relevant in 2021. We haven't had any real touches since then. We've had one there, maybe mm, two, three. So there is a potential short on this. So if you think that this is a, a movement literally just off the back of um, the back of that news, then there's actually a short on the four hour on this. We have this big buying bar with a small inside bar there and you'd be looking to take this as a short position i'd probably put my entry a little bit lower than that uh stop loss exactly where it is it's a one-to-one -one trade and it may actually go even a little bit further but i would there wouldn't have it any lower than the open and the close here of this previous battle I'd never, never go straight down the bottom, open the close here. So this would be a 1.97 to 1. Uh, you could actually bring your stop loss down a little tighter, but because it's a 4 hour, because I'd like to leave a little bit of movement on this uh, and then go from there. Okay. Aussie CAD. And again, similarly, look, we've had a little bounce, a double, triple bottom here, and then look again, massive, massive strength. So again, for me, it, this is in no man's land. It needs to hit this area here before I'm looking for it to drop. We want it to break and retest here. We wanted CAD to continue um, with its strength, but it didn't. Aussie has now changed direction. Aussie CHF, we wanted to stop here, it didn't. Uh, we'll move that level up a fraction higher now. So that's where that's where we're looking for this to go. And if that comes up and hits that area, um, I'd like one more buying day, sort of a little small high test bar. And then this could be in an area ripe for shorting. Um, Aussie JPY. And look, JPY has, has been so weak over the last of the last couple of days. You can see the difference on this. So CHF has been one of the stronger currencies. So if you look at this, we've had 
one, two days, small, really small pullbacks, barely making higher highs. And then today, look, that massive movement, where if you look at Aussie JPY, look, Aussie strength, Aussie strength, Aussie strength, and then Aussie strength today. Now, again, we know that's not Aussie strength. That is literally JPY weakness. We do have a, a horizontal level here. And if it comes back into that area, that is something we would be looking at. So we've had one, two, three, four touches. Moves that back to red. And if it comes back up and hits there, we could be looking at a, a nice little short on that. So that's something to be uh, keep an eye on. Is Aussie at the minute? Are we going to continue with Aussie strength? Is it in a in a in a part where we're looking for it? the normal trend to resume and then Aussie weakness going to, going to change or is that the catalyst now for more Aussie strength? Thank you very much. If anyone has any questions or they like what I saw today, don't be afraid to reach out to me on contact at henry-ward.co.uk um, or the Discord or any of the channels. Don't be afraid to reach out or comment in the link below. If anyone ever wants to come to the trading floor, again, reach out and you're more than welcome to sit beside me and we can trade together. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.